I suppose the way to look at it and the way we, the president looks at it and we look at it is it's not a news organization so much as uh, it has a perspective. And that's a different take. And more importantly is not have the CNNs and the others in the world basically be led in following uh, Fox. But a lot of their news programming, it's really not news. It's pushing a point of view. And the bigger thing is that uh, uh, other news organizations like yours uh, ought not to treat them that way. And we're not going to treat them that way. We're going to appear on their shows. Uh, we're going to participate, but understanding that they represent a point of view. Well, here is Fox News Senior Vice President Michael Clemente's response to that. Surprisingly, the White House continues to declare war on a news organization instead of focusing on the critical issues that Americans are concerned about, like jobs, health care, and two wars. The door remains open, and we welcome a discussion about the facts behind the issues. Okay. The back and forth. Let's bring in the panel. Steve Hayes, senior writer for the Weekly Standard. Juan Williams, news analyst for National Public Radio, and syndicated columnist Charles Krauthammer. Steve, uh, have you thought about what the strategy may be uh, with, with the White House and what they're talking yeah. about? Again, another Sunday in which they're bringing this up. I mean, I've spent a lot of time thinking about it, and I'm, I remain perplexed. It does not make any sense as a part of a strategy. I mean, I thought that it might have been a mistake initially when Anita Dunn said these things, but clearly, I think, given the, the, the comments from both Axelrod and Rahm Emanuel and the fact that they said much the same thing, this was a planned response from the White House again this Sunday. But here's the irony. David Axelrod goes on ABC News. He makes the argument that, that Fox is too ideological, and he makes a plea that legitimate news organizations, quote unquote, like ABC News, not follow Fox into sort of partisan journalism. And he makes the point in response to a question from the host. George Stephanopoulos, who was Bill Clinton's sort of media hatchet man for years. I mean, the irony is incredible. Now, as it happens, I watch George Stephanopoulos. I think he's doing a terrific job for the most part. And I think the conservative gripes about him when he was given the job were overblown. But George Stephanopoulos last week was just named the fill-in anchor for ABC News, uh, World News Tonight. That would be like Karl Rove filling in for you. It doesn't happen here. I think it's, it's the, the irony is, I think, rather amazing, and it's incredible that he didn't see it. Juan. Well, you know, the question that occurs to me is uh, you hear David Axelrod talking about Fox pushing a point of view. And I think this is true if you look at our primetime lineup. You get people who are, in fact, strong in terms of their opinions, and opinions are batted back and forth. Um, but I think to myself, oh, so that means that what goes on, let's say, at MSNBC with Maddow and Oberman and Schultz, uh, that's not a point of view? Uh, but I think it is a point of view. Or Lou Dobbs on C uh, that's not a point of view? Or Sanchez or these other people. It seems to me that they're saying, no, we, what's the problem here is we don't like Fox's point of view, that Fox's perspective is aggravating to them. And I think, well, gee, now that seems so petty and small as opposed to engaging. And of course, it doesn't speak to the broader universe of news coverage that goes away from those kinds of personality and opinion-driven programs. But lift the curtain here. Is this because they are getting attacked from the left on a number of different issues, uh, from Afghanistan, the public option to Gitmo to interrogations? Is it because they need a foil and Fox News happens to be it? I think that they need a foil at this moment. Get, I think there are lots of people who are on the left, but it's been particular with independence. And remember, Fox has a huge audience. And so Fox has the ability, I think, to introduce points of criticism, and they are right now feeling as if people are moving in the other direction, and they want to make sure whatever they can do to somehow neutralize Fox. Charles. Look, the great sin, the great sin of Fox News is that it broke the monopoly of the liberal media. That's the reason why it's so wildly successful. I once said years ago that the genius of Roger Ailes and Rupert Murdoch is to have discovered a niche American broadcasting audience in news, namely half of the American people. And the other consequence is that it angers the Obama administration, which is used to, particularly after last year, wall-to-wall -wall adulation. I mean, this is almost comical if you look at the lineup. On the one hand, in the tank are ABC, NBC, CBS, NPR, PBS, CNN, and MSNBC. Some of these, like MSNBC, are so in the tank they, they need scuba gear. Some of them occasionally emerge for a breath of air, but only occasionally. And Fox stands up and refuses uh, to bend the knee, and that's what they can't stand. Look, CNN was patted on the head by the Obama administration's objective. CNN is an organization that 
few weeks ago had a fact checking of a Saturday Night Live skit that was mildly critical of Obama, but did no fact the checking on wildly, grotesquely libelous, racist statements allegedly made by Rush Limbaugh, which were not made by Rush Limbaugh. It gives you an idea of the difference in how they treat things, and that's not a matter of sloppiness, that's a matter of ideology. White House Communication Director Anita Dunn has responded to a piece of tape that first aired on Glenn Beck's show in which she is seen speaking to high school graduates here in Washington in June of this year. This is her response, first of all, to the tape where she references her admiration for Chairman Mao, a former communist leader of China. The Mao quote is one I picked up from the late Republican strategist Lee Atwater from something I read in the late 1980s, so I hope I don't get my progressive friends mad at me. The use of the phrase favorite political philosophers was intended as irony, but clearly the effort fell flat. Well, here is the, the actual clip. Two of my favorite political philosophers, Mao Zedong and Mother Teresa, not often coupled with each other, <laughs> but, but the two people that I turn to most. Charles. I turn to most? Oh, or does she mean Lee Atwater turns to most? I didn't hear the Atwater reference in that speech. All of a sudden, it's discovered. And of course, he's, he's uh, uh, appropriately a uh, conservative and, uh, and a Republican. Look, I don't know if it was a joke. If she is, she has no future in stand-up. But she's speaking to a high school audience, graduates, who may not get the irony, and speaks about it seriously about it. And it's not just invoking Gamal, but the idiocy of it, she actually used him as an example of individuality and how do you ought, you ought to choose your own path in life. He was the biggest collectivist in the history of the world and he killed a lot of people on the wayside. Her political philosophy is ignorant as an aside, so I'm not sure how she defends herself on this other than to expose herself to utter ridicule. Juan? Well, you know, I mean, actually the, the quote that comes after where she says, you know, Mao said, go take on your enemies. It's rather vanilla, you know, like go to, into the fight. But the idea that you would somehow advertise Mao to the larger audience, to these or young high people. School. Yeah, I just find, you know, look, Mao Zedong was a mass murderer, there's no question, and he abused children sexually. I mean, it's, it's not someone that you would hold up to that kind. Even in China now, they are not exactly celebrating Mao. Um, so, I mean, that's different. And remember, it's interesting to me, Brett, they started this conversation by saying they were upset at, at Beck having called the president a racist. They're upset that the Fox broadcast side had not carried the speech to the joint session. Now it shifted to, gee, you know, those guys make a good argument for the right. Quickly, Steve, this hasn't been picked up a lot of places. That was, my, that was my point in closing. I mean, the irony, of course, is that she says this. Nobody else is covering it. You've got basically uh, the White House communications director praising someone responsible for the death of 40 million plus individuals, and nobody else seems interested. And, and she speaks openly about how they controlled the news last year. That's not news? So do we need another election in Afghanistan, and will that hold up a decision on more American troops going in? We'll talk about that when we come back.